Constable Sean here. Now, as ever, thank you so much for joining me. We're in the very heart of London today, New Bond Street, a place really that's famous for, well, money, number one. If you could afford to shop here, then really, um, you know, I don't know if we can be friends. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, you need some serious money. All the big stores are down here, you know, everything that you think about, you know, Gucci, Dior, all of those big names. But I don't know about you, but when you go in these stores, I quite like to look, but I couldn't part the money um, just for the same sort of product really you know I know a lot of people don't like that when you say that but really it's nice to have money but you can't be daft with it can you or is that me just being a tight northerner now here at number 73 you're answering that aren't you I know <laughs> I can tell here at number 73 this particular place that you're looking at now has a very very big history in fact some of the biggest names in the world of pop have gone through these doors but you wouldn't know it because even they had to sign secrecy contracts. Let me explain. Back in the late 1940s, this here, number 73, was a glittering ballroom. Everybody came here to dance, and it was one of those places that um, wasn't exactly top-notch, but really had great bands, great vocalists, and a sort of folk, um, how should we put it, glamour. You know, if you couldn't afford Park Lane and all the big hotels like Grosvenor House, the Dorchester, all of that sort of stuff, then you may have popped down here to dance. Just up the road, of course, is a brilliant London Palladium, so you may have seen a show and then thought, well, we'll just spend a little bit longer on our night out. Has fashions changed and people decided they're no longer to go ballroom dancing or simply dancing? Then, of course, a lot of these ballrooms were left deserted. But one company had a very brilliant idea, F.W. Woolworth. Now, Woolworths decided that they really wanted a share of a very lucrative market that was emerging in the early part of the 50s. We're talking, of course, about the teenager. That's right, we all were well once, you know. And uh, you, even you, yes, I can see you're looking. Yes, you were. And what they did, if you think about it, in the early 50s, people started to buy records in their droves, didn't they? Records were the new thing, particularly the rock and roll heroes. Of course, the big record labels like Decca and Parlophone, EMI, etc., really had a sort of, well, clutch of that market. So what was being the people's store decided that they were going to get a share of that market and they launched this their own label embassy records now embassy records for those that don't remember holds a very special place in many people's hearts and here's what? embassy records you see embassy records were this sort of version that if your mom and dad couldn't afford to buy you the latest say elvis tommy Steele, cliff richard helen shapiro you name it all of those voices that we've all loved from the past well they did it here a copycat version now, behind the idea really was a very clever idea for Woolworths because it made sure that they got the lion's share of the teenage market, plus the fact it swelled the stores of people going in on a Friday and Saturday to buy those singles. Hence the reason you saw the, well, huge rise in the pick and mitts and the sweets. Do you see how it all works now? We all went in, didn't we? Bought the record, got a bag of sweets and then went home. That's how it really developed. But through these doors here at number 73, Woolworths Embassy decided to set up their own record studio and it was a state-of-the-art ideally situated being a ballroom with great acoustics but more importantly what they did was use very famous stars to record the hit songs of the day sound alikes by using separate names and they even got in on the royal market way back in 1953 because Pearl Carr and Teddy Johnson who were later on in their career to represent the United Kingdom at the Eurovision Song Contest recorded this very special version of a song to celebrate the coronation and this was duly sent over to Buckingham Palace and Woolworths were indeed and sent back a letter with gracious thanks from our wonderful monarch great piece of marketing and as I often say on the show you see nothing is truly new now embassy records went on for many years and are now collectors items really the big fun is deciding who do you think recorded this and that and who was behind you know that person's sort of orchestration that sort of stuff Lots of big stars did, in fact, do these sort of recordings. Rumours are the likes of Tom Jones, Matt Munro, big names like that. Of course, many have admitted to it years later. Many still don't say. Obviously, they're still getting some kind of royalty, hence the reason they remain quiet. So if you're a fan of this particular piece of nostalgia and you are in London, do look up next time you come down New Bond Street at number 73 because through this door, and these people who are in this store today will have no idea were some of the biggest names in the hit recorded music of that era. 
and more importantly, those records sold in their thousands around the world. Now, are you going up in the loft or shall I? Check out if you've got some embassy records in your loft. Neil Sean, New Bond Street, London.